Ladies and gentlemen, Damian Drake of Red Star! Yeah, hell yeah! Let's go! <laughs> I thought you were gonna really do it. <laughs> hell yeah. I appreciate you being here, man. Uh, if For those that may not know who you are, sir, can you please properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts the world you are right now. Plug and promote anything you'd like. I probably shouldn't have done that. I almost just exploded my entire truly. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> That's funny. Mm. What's up, everybody? Damian Drake, Van Red Star. You know the rest. I'm the fucking vocalist. What's up? <laughs> what? Toss out all your uh, social media links, also, real quick. Oh, dude, fucking uh, add Red Star music, everything. Add Damian Drake, everything. It's it's simple as it's got to be. So, dude, this is funny. We, I, 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 I told the story earlier today. I messaged the band's Facebook page like a, over a year ago, and I don't think it ever got read. And I was like, yo, Damien, <laughs> what's going on here, bro? We really want to get you on the show. And you were like, dude, I'll just come on. That's no big deal, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, why didn't anybody check the message? But, dude, you guys are blowing up right now. You're, you're doing all the festivals. All the festivals, man. How, how excited are you for 2023? Oh, dude, it's fucking... Uh... It's pretty crazy, man. Like, like just the fact that like Aftershock and Louder Than Life got announced like back to back days. We didn't even know that until like maybe like a week ago. But then like, and then announcing Welcome to Rockville like earlier in the year, like that's just just it's wild, man. Like, it's so wild to like go from like we just been playing like we just played our first LA show last year, and now like we're playing three festivals. Like, <laughs> how does how does that work? Like for for bands that are watching, how what is the process of that? Is that a management thing? Is that just hustling on social media? Like, how did you go so fast to that level? Um. Well, we actually, you know, it's just making a lot of relationships. You know, so like when um I don't, I'm sure you're aware, but D Danny Wimmer has like DWP uh, on fucking Twitch. They do their Space Zebra show. And last year, uh, I sent them our music to like play it on their show and stuff. And then actually built a relationship with uh, this girl, Amanda, that works for Danny Wimmer. And she just, you know, fucked with what we had going on. And was just like, yeah, you guys want to come play a festival? And for, again, first it was Rockville. We're like, hell yeah. And then like, Next thing you know, like two months later, it's like, oh yeah, you guys want to play these two? I'm like, yeah. Uh, who says no? That's who it. says no to that? <laughs> how was how was the Rockville experience? It hasn't happened yet. It's in May. Okay, so yeah, that right. one's in. So Rockville's in May, and then don't, uh, don't quote me because I what, I'm gonna get them mixed up because they just both got announced. But one one of them uh, for Loud and Life and Aftershock. One of them is in September. The other one's in October. I think Aftershock's in October. Cause I'm pretty sure that's the last one. And then September is Loud and Life. So it's all like within like the next coming months, basically. I I totally believe it. I know that there was a show that you guys had with FDS like like four or five months ago, maybe a little bit longer than that. And I was supposed to go to that one, and something came up, and I couldn't attend. And then all of a sudden, you're everywhere, and I was like, dang, I'm happy for my boy. That's awesome. Dude, uh, but talk to me about what it's like to work with Matt Good. I'm, I'm personally a big From First to Last fan, and we've had Derek, the mm. drummer, on the show. But uh, what was it like to work with Matt? Oh, he's he was fucking cool as shit, man. Like, he's definitely, like, a super quiet dude for someone who, like, has a different pair of sneakers on every day. Like, he's, like, low-key a hype beast. And then, <laughs> for sure. But, uh, like... I don't know, he's super chill, man, and it's just, like, funny because, like, you know, he's worked, he's been working with, like, everybody, like, I know he's, like, been, like, he's done a ton of stuff, like, Asking Alexandria, and I think he's working on their new stuff now, and, um, you know, just, like, for him to be, like, just super down to earth, like, like, <laughs> he actually, he was dying, because, like, when we were working on Bad Decisions, I had, like, a pre-course on there that was, like, so Kid Rock that he just started falling on the floor laughing. He's like, dude, 
please, like, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was just, and it, 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 we ended up making a better song, but it was just like, he, he's super cool. And then not only that, like, I've never been in a Tesla prior to being with him. And he's like, yo, want to take a ride in the Tesla? And there's this fucking street that's like in, it's like connected to like some fucking shopping center over there. He's like, yo, watch this. Fucking zero to fucking like 80. Like this, dude. We <laughs> flew down this fucking side street in this parking lot, man. I was like, holy fuck, dude. I'm, like, I've been on some roller coasters and shit, but I've never experienced a fucking Dang. electric car going fast, you know? <laughs> that is cool. Did you did you ask him any weird from first to last questions? Um, I mean, besides, like, how is, like, fucking Skrillex doing? I don't know. <laughs> like, in a, <laughs> like, in a joking manner. But, uh, yeah, I... I I don't know. I try not to like. Yeah, you know, I feel you. Like I feel a lot you. Of people, a lot of people get like bombarded with stuff like that. I try to like, I don't know, be a little bit more like human about it. So it's like I, I like as much as like you want to ask stuff like that. I don't know. Like in the moment, you're just kind of like, I don't know, dude. Like I don't want to like. I totally understand where you're going with it. It's you're there to work, not you know, be a fan for a second. I I get it. Um. So, yeah. am I correct that you don't live with the rest of the band? Nope. How does I, I how does that work it. out, like, practice-wise, demo-wise? How do you guys do that? Uh, they So, they luckily all live out in L.A. So, like, it's more like they just, I just get fucking uh, insiders on, like, how practice is growing and, like, what they got, what they're doing, and we're all in a group chat and stuff. And then when we have to get on the phone for stuff, we get on the phone. But I mean, the whole band started just over zoom and shit. So it's, it's been for a while. Our original drummer lived in Florida. So then we really lived all over the place. But now like the guy that we have now, he lives in LA with the rest of the band. So it works out great. Cause they can all jam and practice the set. And then basically I come into town and fucking, practice with them and then we go do whatever we got to do when you so, say when you say pretty... you started as a zoom band but like how did you meet them if you're so far away like how, how what was that first experience like was it just like responding to a social so, media ad or something or so um basically like it, it's kind of wild like me at the time me and the our original drummer we were all in other bands and then like pandemic hit Everybody had to sit down, basically. Every, every, everybody's heard that. Everybody knows what happened. And, like, uh, the drummer was on the same management as my old band prior. And he hit me up and was like, yo, like, we're doing this side project thing because, like, we got nothing else to fucking do if you're interested. And they're like, and it's like rap rock. And I'm like, oh, well, I love that shit. So, yeah. And then we didn't actually meet until we got in the room together in – Fort Wayne, where we worked with our first producer, Sahaj Ticketin, who's from the band Raw. And um, yeah, that was literally like the first time I met these guys in person was at the Airbnb we were staying at. It was like some like reality TV show type shit. Like, like oh, like we're all in the house together now. Let's see what happens. And we ended up just making music and it came out dope and fucking here we are. <laughs> that, is, that is such a cool, but not the most common way bands work out but you guys are making it work man that's cool uh i do want to do some trivia with you in a bit did you bring any hot sauce i, know I you... have some what you got i have some Theo. it works it's like one of my goats okay i'm really afraid to take a shot of this but i don't want to be a sore loser or a party pooper so i'm gonna yeah. do it with you whether you got you get the question right or wrong but uh here's the thing about the trivia you get to pick the topic what movie or tv show have you seen the most? Where if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. Ah, but like, okay. To well, me, to me, it's easier to pick a movie because TV show has potentially a hundred oh, episodes. My. So I, I would go yeah. the movie route. If you need a minute to think about it, it's okay. Hmm, I'm trying to think of like, I mean, I'd almost want to say a TV show because I've been binge watching Yellowstone. Like, I've been, like, real hooked on Yellowstone. I'm almost done with it. So, like, I almost want to say that just because it's, like, fresh in my brain. Okay. Like, but 
feel like I'm gonna end up taking shots of hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I can look up Yellowstone. Uh, what song do you want us to jam first? Uh, from from Red Star, assuming uh, we which bad, we are we played Do It Again earlier. Bad decisions because we're about to fucking make a bad decision and take shots of hot sauce. So. Hell yeah. Yeah! <laughs> That's, I love it. I love it, guys. If you enjoy the songs that we're about the song we're about to play, please support Red Star. Hit the follow button. <laughs> Do the same on YouTube. This is not that one. This is Bad Decisions from Red Star. And let me look up some, some trivia right here on Yellowstone. Yeah, it's fire. And it's totally like built ready for radio too, dude. Totally is. Yeah, that's done by Matt. So Matt knows what he's doing. It's coming. Yeah. That radio is coming. All right. I think I got some trivia that could possibly stump you. If you don't get this one, I'll search for one that I think is an easier one second. But here we go. All right. In Yellowstone, Luke Grimes plays, I believe he plays Case Dutton. Is that correct? Case, yeah. Case Dutton. In what branch of military did Case Dutton serve in Yellowstone? What branch of the military? Oh, fuck. <laughs> it is mentioned a couple of times in the show. I'm gonna. I'm hoping this is as simple as I think it is. I want to say, oh fuck, army, please. It is not the army. <laughs> he fuck. was a U.S. Navy SEAL, my friend. Damn it! Enjoy the hot sauce. I'll do some with you. Is it burning a little bit? Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> You're a trooper, though. Uh, do you have any? Do you have any before? Right before it's time to step on stage, do you have any fun rituals that you guys do, or any interesting vocal warm up techniques? Oh, I mean, I don't, I don't know if they're like interesting. I mean, like I do like the typical stuff, but like we we always do like uh, we kind of like huddle up like on some like sports team shit, and like I don't know, like you know, like we'll like get together and be like. Then we're like, we're going out there. We're doing it. What we got to do? We got to give them everything we got. Like, you know, like those, like typical, like. You're the hype man. You got to hype them up real quick. Yeah. Coach in the locker room pep talk. And then we, you know, RS on three. You know, that's like, I feel like that's very rich. That gets me like hyped up. Like right before we're like literally like intro music's kicked in and we're about to walk on stage. Like getting that going real quick. It gets you like, you know what I mean? It gets you fucking amped up. So that I guess that's like the before the stage ritual what did you do before red star were you in previous projects and they just happened to just not work out so you were looking for a new project and that's how you found them so i actually was rapping like making like my solo music and then i was doing like a metalcore band and yeah it was like the funny thing is is like the metalcore band like right when i left like we put out a song and right now it's sitting on like 3 million streams. So like that kind of was funny how that played out. But, um, you know, it was just like, I like heavy shit, but I don't know. There's something about when we got in the room with like this band that it just felt different. And I've always wanted to do rap rock. Like that's just, I mean, again, I was rapping and making my own rap music before I started playing in bands. So it just, I don't know. It just made... It just made sense to me to want to do it more than what I was doing at the time. And honestly, I'm not that good of a screamer either. Like, so singing and rapping is like way more my thing than yelling. <laughs> so, <laughs> For sure. <laughs> as, as someone who is also heavily tattooed, what is your most painful one? Oh, dude, my throat. Easily. My that, throat. The Adam's my apple? Oh, yeah, dude. Like, even just when he was placing the outline, I was like, oh, I didn't like, but I did everything in pieces. So like I have like a head on each side and then I have like this wolf that goes down in my trachea, like in the trachea suck too. But like, yeah, right on the abs. I got a big one, dude. Like my thing's <laughs> like a fucking, so That's... that was, that was rough <laughs> for me. I'll never do it again. Right in the middle of the chest where there's like no meat right there. That spot That's spot. I did my whole chest when when I turned eighteen, dude, and it was horrible. <laughs> like, yeah, it's painful. Same deal, like right. Yeah. I feel like I got like fiction, dude. Like when they bring the chick back to life. Yeah. Like, I felt like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> That's hilarious. Hell yeah. Uh, 
let's say let's say we've reached December and you're looking back on what Red Star accomplished this year. What what personal goals do you have beyond what we already know about the festivals? I assume more singles coming down the road. What would you like to look back on and be like, we did this, we did this? Like what are your personal goals? Um some really dope tours and shows and uh we got shit in the pipeline uh, it sounds so corny man i hate it so many people say this shit but we have shit in the pipeline that um i'm hoping does really really well you know and um i'm just hoping that everything that we do progresses the band that much further you know because at the end of the day like what we're doing what we have announced so far is definitely no small feat so I think uh, as long as like the band progresses from anything we have planned or anything we do, I'll be happy to look back on that and be like, dope, it worked out, you know? <laughs> Chad wants to know, what was the name of the metalcore band that you quit that has 3 million streams? Uh, the band was called Another Day's Armor. Uh, I'd actually highly, I, I, I mean, I normally don't talk about it, but like it, the song, it's a song called Underneath. And that's like the first, and that's the one I'm that has the three million. Um, that has rapping, singing, and screaming on it. So that's like, and I did all of that. It, it was, that was, but again, like the screaming, man, it was taking a toll on me because I was not doing it right, and I never got lessons or anything. So like, honestly, like, rap, like I said, rapping and singing is just way easier on me vocally, and so, but it's definitely a cool song. I'm not, I don't regret it. It did well. You know, got a lot of streams, so not mad at it. There's no, there's no fault in that for sure. Second Yellowstone trivia. It's an easier one. How many children does John Dutton have in Yellowstone? I got this. How many children does he have? Four. That is correct. Yeah, hell yeah. That is correct. Ah, oh, damn it. Mother f I had to do a quarter shot of this earlier and it was terrible. So I have this apple cider vinegar. I'm gonna pour oh. a half shot of it, which it's actually technically really good for you to drink a shot of this a day based on what I read on the internet, but it has to have the mother. This has whatever the mother is. Uh, dude, I, father. <laughs> it, it literally has to have the mother. I don't know if you can see that where my finger is. It says the mother. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, um, dude, so are labels, are labels contacting you? Are they saying, bro, yeah, we want to sign you? And, or or do you guys just want to keep it DIY? Like, what what is what is the label talk looking like? So I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff. There's stuff that I really wish I could talk about. I really did. I really wish I can. But I, there's something really cool coming soon that um, I'm hyped to talk about. But there there's conversations going. It's just at the end of the day, you know, the problem that a lot of bands do make is like signing early and signing for nothing. So then. Next thing you know, they're walking away with like a crazy amount of debt or like just like not realizing what to do, you know, and labels do help. It's like DIY is cool, but labels do help a, a lot. But you just need to build your worth up more before you just sign shit, because otherwise you're just going to get a shitty deal. You'll get shelved. You'll never be able to put out music. It's it's a whole thing. So it but there are conversations going. So it's just making sure that things make sense for us so we don't screw ourselves. Well, let's say hypothetically that said label comes along and it, the deal looks good and you're going to get paid. And all of a sudden way at the bottom, it says, Damien, my friend, you get a $20 million signing bonus for signing this. So now you've set aside some money. You've taken care of your family. You bought all the house and gear you could ever, you could ever need. And you have $19.8 million. Less. I don't know. What are you buying that's just like a fun toy to splurge on yourself? Oh man, there's so many things. Um, <laughs> definitely, 
definitely vehicles. <laughs> definitely. Hell yeah. Like fucking. I want like one of everything, man. I want like a pickup truck. I want a fucking Lambo. I want a motorcycle. Like I want like one of everything. So then I have like the option. So yeah, like like a seven <laughs> like, seven be... vehicles, seven car garage kind of thing. Yeah, but reasonable. <laughs> you know? For sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's the definite first one because there's like a lot of stuff that I like that I can't afford right now. So I'm like, but uh. Yeah, I, I think that'd probably be like my first go to is like a really sick car, you know. It'll just whip around in. Hell yeah. Chat wants to know if there's any talks of, of Vakin or the Hurricane Festival. Um not that I know of. I mean, who knows? Because these festival announcements come in and then like other festivals take notice. So like maybe if like they they think that they, we make sense being on something. They hit us up because it, you know, at the end of the day, it's just like that's what it is. It's like oh, like you, we see you have the experience doing it, or like we see there's a demand for you, so like we want to see what's up. You know, come fucking come work with us. But uh, not anything from those two as of right now. But that would be tight. I only have time for a couple more. But uh, is is there ever talks to have like a big time feature on a Red Star song that could possibly be for like clicks, likes, subs, catapult to the next level? Is there ever talks of having a big feature? I got a homie that we're trying to figure something out. I mean, he's like, uh, I mean, I'd say he's, he's definitely bigger than us, you know, and people definitely know who his band is. And he since day one has been like in my corner with this band. So we've been trying to figure that one out. And uh, there might be another feature that's also bigger than us that might be coming soon. That might be already done. That might be really dope. <laughs> so we're excited when um, that, when that news is announced, we hope. Mm -hmm. So yeah. hell yeah, definitely worth it. I... Let's pound it. Let's pound a beer real quick. A truly, and uh, my final my final question for you, sir, is uh, what's what's a common mistake that you see other local bands make? Maybe you, you're you're playing a gig at the Whiskey or wherever, and you there's a band opening before you, and you see this this band always make this mistake. What advice could you give them? Um, definitely have all your shit. <laughs> definitely have everything you need. Make sure your tracks work. Not having your tracks working is a big, big, you know, because at the end of the day, even not just talking about like back, like, like even, even when it comes to like, if the tracks are fucked up, which normally means your click tracks are fucked up, there goes your drummer. Then you're just fucking trying to figure out your whole entire set. But yeah, I mean, but the other thing too, I would say is being on time, be early on time. You'd rather be early and hang out than fucking just rolling in, trying to bring all your merch, bring all your shit in, you know, like, cause then you're just rushing the whole time and nobody likes that, you know, cause then you're fucking on edge and you're going to make other people on edge. So be early for shit. Has that ever happened to you guys where, where like the, the Mac stopped working for some reason and the drummer loses the click or the backing track stop, stop working. Uh, not that, but it feels like almost every time we play a show for some reason, it's like we have our issues with uh, having things ready to go. And that's definitely not fun. But we always end up figuring it out, whether it's like a sound to us issue or whatever, like how we have things set up. But like we've we've had the problem where like we've got there and it's like, oh, we've been practicing with these tracks all the time and no tracks. So my advice is from my own personal experiences of just – making sure everything's good to go because you can't hold the show up and you got to make sure that everything fucking plays correctly. So that's definitely a big thing to do. Hell yeah. That's some good advice for sure. Always have basically like a, pl a plan B set. Um, we've had people where everything broke down and the front man has to become a comedian for two or three minutes while everyone fixes little things on the side. So learn a couple jokes as oh. well, I suppose. But Damien, this is a lot of fun, man. If it's okay with you, can I throw this on YouTube later tonight and tag you in a bunch of stuff? Hell yeah, bro. I appreciate it, man. Safe I appreciate you hitting me up. 
Oh, it is my pleasure. Thank you for coming on. Safe travels for all the festivals. I think you guys are poised to absolutely explode in 2023. I see big things coming. Uh, if you chat to Matt, uh, if you chat with Matt, tell him that we got to get him on sometime. But, dude, this is a lot of fun, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Thank you, dog. I'll catch you later, man. Damian Drake, arrest her! Hell yeah!